Hi, today we'll take a look at XGAP trackers. This is not a render. I can confirm that at least a few real sets have already been sent to YouTubers and testers. The real question is, do they actually work as advertised? The current software is still in a very early stage. For example, I have to follow a super specific process just to get the trackers to connect. So I run XGAP Studio, and finally, I can see the trackers connected. So I can start Steam VR now. But if you don't follow the exact order, nothing connects, or the trackers might spawn under the floor in Steam VR. At this point, there are no trackers because I need to click Connect to Steam manually. Finally, I get something moving in Steam VR. Now I can click Mounting Reset, Stand Straight, Reset Yaw, and finally, the trackers seem ready for play, although my right leg isn't moving exactly straight. Let's do one more reset. There's still something wrong with the right leg, whatever. Here are the trackers in VR chat. Okay, I think I figured it out. My right foot might be inverted. The left one works correctly, but let me double check. Maybe I accidentally put the foot tracker upside down on my right foot. Once again, I'll need to reset and recalibrate in VR chat. success. Finally, both legs are working correctly. It's interesting. I didn't provide my height or do any specific body calibration, yet my body seems to match pretty well. Not perfect, but close enough. When I put my legs together, they cross. There are definitely issues with the body proportions. I didn't notice any settings to adjust my body proportions at However, there is a haptic feedback button. If I click it, all the trackers start to buzz. But it's a faint, high-pitched buzz that doesn't seem suitable for haptics. And that's it. Just two test buttons for haptics. To make this feature work in any game, you'd need an entire haptics SDK and custom mods. Oh wait, I found a tiny button to set body proportions. But again, I have no idea how to calibrate them. Am I supposed to measure my body with a tape measure and manually input all the dimensions? There's zero documentation about this. And just two minutes later, my whole body is twisted because of tracker drift. This is the fastest and worst drift I've experienced with any tracker I've tested. I know why this happens. I have a bad magnetic environment. To fix this, I need to turn off the magnetic sensor and save the setting. But have you noticed? The setting says magnetic sensor off, but it doesn't actually change anything. This is the issue with these trackers. The firmware often hangs and the devices don't respond to any setting changes. Restarting everything from scratch is the only way to bring them back to life. The funny thing is, I still haven't been able to switch off the magnetic sensor. I'm not sure if I was dreaming when I thought it turned off yesterday, or if it was just the same bug showing an off status message without actually changing the setting. Either way, even if it did work yesterday, I couldn't get even three minutes before my body started twisting again. And this is a huge issue. It doesn't matter if the camera can auto-reset them. If they drift every two minutes, you'll need to stand up or extend your legs constantly. This quickly becomes so annoying that it's unbearable. It's the exact same issue I had with Pico trackers. I'll link the video. Basically, Pico trackers have the same automatic camera reset feature, but you need to stand up every two to five minutes to fix your trackers. It's incredibly frustrating to the point where I consider that tracker system unusable. And unfortunately, the same situation applies here. With the current software, XGAP trackers are unusable. It all comes down to the software. For example, IMU-based, camera-assisted systems like Heratora X and Slime VR have been in closed beta for over a year now. 
Despite their promising hardware, the main challenge lies in perfecting the software. The same goes for Pico trackers. Their main issue is also software not working as advertised. And there are definitely wireless connection issues here too. For instance, I've noticed that even when I keep my leg extended, it jumps around randomly because the trackers lose connection with the PC. I'm touching the receiver right now. That's how close I am to it. Yet it still loses connection if I lie down or turn my body the wrong way. These trackers use a Bluetooth type connection. While it's very battery efficient, it doesn't offer good performance or a reliable connection. I've noticed that tracking can become laggy due to connection issues as well. A lot of things can interfere with these trackers, anything from your Quest controllers to simply sitting or lying down in the wrong position. And once again, not even two minutes in and my body is twisted by tracker drift. This is the worst performance I've seen from any IMU trackers I've ever tested. Imagine this, even if I had automatic camera resets working, I'd still need to stand up every two minutes and look at my trackers for them to realign. This would be extremely annoying, whether I'm just chatting with friends or doing any activity, having to check on my legs every couple of minutes would completely ruin the experience. For example, I stood up, fell off a ledge in VR, and now I have to go around to get back. It's frustrating. If you're curious about the model I'm using, it's called Sapphire by NEP. It has face tracking, and people recently went crazy over finger physics in the Batman game. Well, this model has toe physics. Peak VR. Here is my conclusion. While the idea of a Bluetooth-based, camera-assisted IMU tracker system is promising, the current software falls short of expectations. Other IMU-based camera-assisted systems like Heratora X and Slime VR have been in closed beta for a year and show the complexity of perfecting software to make these systems truly functional. Without reliable software, even the best hardware is essentially useless. Lastly, I haven't even tested the AI camera features yet. It comes with a heavy, all-metal hobby camera. The AI camera system adds a lot of bulk to the front of your headset and drains its battery. On top of that, it requires a Quest developer account, sideloading, and a bunch of other steps just to install. And here's the kicker. There's no official XGAP app for the Quest. Instead, you sideload some generic, no-name Chinese IPTV app, input your headset's IP address, then plug that same IP into your PC for it to stream video, presumably so the AI can handle the resets. Now, considering the hoops I already had to jump through just to get these trackers connected to Steam VR, imagine adding all this extra hassle on top. Honestly, I'd rather press a reset button on my Panda trackers once an hour than deal with all this developer nonsense. Not to mention having a dangling camera on my headset. Oh, and did I mention? The Quest kills side-loaded apps running in the background every 10 minutes. The AI camera feature, which is their most advertised selling point, is actually the least usable. In fact, it's so bad that it proves how impractical it is to run a system like this without official support from Meta allowing access to the headset's cameras. Many people are hyped about the claimed 50-hour battery life. I can't confirm or deny that since I've only used the trackers for about two hours and the battery indicators don't seem accurate. For comparison, Heratora X wireless trackers offer 20 hours on a single charge. Bluetooth-based Slime VR trackers can last up to 40 hours. So the 50-hour claim isn't revolutionary. But here's the main trade-off. All these trackers, XGAP included, struggle with wireless connection reliability. That's why most Slime VR and Panda trackers still use Wi-Fi, despite its 10x higher battery cost. Wi-Fi offers the performance needed for smooth tracking, a reliable connection, and excellent range across the entire room. I can even link videos of me using Wi-Fi-based trackers outdoors, showing how great their range and connection can be, all while offering 10 to 15 hours on a single charge. I managed to get the trackers connected to a Slime VR server, but there's zero documentation explaining how to assign trackers, perform resets, calibrate body proportions. As you can see, they're using chest and waist trackers, which isn't even recommended by Slime VR. They suggest chest and hip trackers instead.
These trackers might stay in place on yoga pants, but on regular loose clothing, they tend to move and slide around. For this demo, I wore them under my clothes, but the camera system wouldn't work like that since it needs the trackers visible. I didn't enjoy using sticky straps that require constant adjustment every time you mount the trackers on your body. Comparatively, Panda trackers and Heratorax have quick straps that don't stick and only need to be adjusted once. You know how nice this clasp is? So fast. It actually doesn't make it feel like a chore to get in here. So I'm repeating myself. Everything hinges on whether the team can deliver quality software to make all the features work. Without good software, trackers are worthless. Even the cheapest set of Slime VR trackers using BMI chips now offer up to 20 minutes between resets. And most of the Slime VR community has moved on to the new LSM6 DSV chip, which requires only one reset per hour. I've been using Panda trackers with the same LSM6 DSV chip for almost a year now. I don't even think about automatic resets anymore because it's simply not an issue, especially not when compared to the hassle of heavy cameras dangling from my headset, all the trouble setting up Android devices and networking just to get this system to work. Lastly, if you're looking for haptic feedback in VR, subscribe. I'll be posting a video soon about the newest True Haptics Vest and electric stimulation armband system from China. For only $250, it already supports all major games, including VR Chat.